podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Here's Lev Kubiak, the Vice President and Chief Security Officer at Pfizer, on the discussion, The Dangers of Counterfeits and How You Can Get Your Medicine Safely, sponsored by Pfizer. Criminal groups are putting very dangerous substances into what appear to be routine prescription medicines. And so we have a significant rise in the presence of fentanyl and methamphetamine. Listen to the entire discussion on WTOP.com. Search Pfizer. Hello and welcome to the 1865 Match Report. It finished Everton 1, Forest 1 at Goodison Park as Steve Cooper's Reds get their first away points of the season and Forest get their first away Premier League points for 23 years. It was an even game of football on the whole. I think a point on reflection is a fair result. Forest might look at the story of the game and the, the late goal that they scored to take the lead and perhaps think that they could have held on for all three points, but on the day it wasn't to be. Brennan Johnson gave Forrest the lead on 81 minutes with a, a tidy finish after a shot from Ryan Yates was saved and the rebound fell to Brennan in the box. He tucked it away nicely. But Everton replied with a few minutes to go through Damari Gray, a long ball upfield from Jordan Pickford, came to Gray who controlled it in acres of space and took the ball past Dean Henderson to earn Everton a share of the spoils. Before we get into the match report, we have the Everton view coming up later. We've got Mike from the Unholy Trinity podcast joining us. And we've also got the Forest News from Callum to come later on. It's Stephen here and joining me for this match report, it's Adam, the cycling defender who made the trip up to Liverpool today to Goodison Park, and he's here with me now. So, Adam, first of all, what was the day like? Another big away day, Premier League away day, in a historic ground in Goodison. Yeah, look, it's it's not one I've been to before, Um, and it's, it's what you'd call a proper football ground for me, like, the the atmosphere was was brilliant before you know post you know, before the game um, you know I, I think the day itself was great you know went to the pub before and the Everton fans Forest fans were mixing absolutely fine you know talking to each other I spoke to a few Everton fans before the game you know it was it was a it was a good fun day got into the ground and stuff and the only thing that I would say was lacking a little bit was the home support I thought they were you know, I'd heard this legendary, you know, Goodison Park atmosphere, and I just didn't really get that. The Forest fans were absolutely unbelievable, as we always are when we go away from home and even at home. Um, but no, I thought Everton fans were slightly disappointed. Today. I think maybe it reflects the mood of the club at the moment. Yeah, and I think that came across on the match coverage as well. Watching live, the Forest fans were making good noise throughout and it was only when Everton scored that goal that the fans really started to get behind them so as you say perhaps a reflection on events and the way things are being run at their club at the moment let's move on to the game itself then and start with the Forest team news and it was one change for the Reds which we knew was coming and that was Musa Niakate who has dropped out Musa Niakate, who who picked up an injury against West Ham last week, a hamstring injury looks like now he'll be out for several months, unfortunately. But it was Steve Cook who came into the starting eleven to replace him. And aside from that change, it was the same Forest team which beat West Ham last weekend. Adam, did you expect that team news and Forest to go largely with the same group of players who got such a great win last weekend? Yeah, I think you have to. I mean, I, I, I'm a firm believer in if you if 
you don't change a winning team. You know, we played really well against West Ham and, you know, of course we wrote a look a little bit, um, but I think overall we played really well against them. And I, I thought it would have been harsh to drop anyone, really. Even though you've brought in such brilliant players, it's, you know, you've got to reward reward winning games. And I think that's what he did today. And it's a shame about Nick Marte because I think that he's, a, he's just a fantastic centre-back. Like, he's just so calm on the ball. Like, he's quick. He's just athletic. And I think that they're a very athletic player. Um, so he, I think he was a big miss today. Um, but I, I think Cook was absolutely fine. And it's, Cook's not the, not the defender that I have an issue with today, personally. Um, the bench suddenly looks a lot stronger as well. Forrest this week, as we all know, have made the signing of Morgan Gibbs-White. He was on the bench alongside fellow new signings, Remo Freuler, Czech Cuyate and Emmanuel Dennis. And all of a sudden, the Forest bench has depth on it, doesn't it? And it was evident today, just looking at some of those names, the fact that the record signings on the bench, perhaps that had something to do with how close to the match that his transfer went through from Wolves, Gibbs White. But did you think there'd be a chance he could actually start this game at Goodison? Uh, no, I, 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 I didn't expect him to start. Um, it's not just about, because there's a lot of people saying, well, he's been playing for Wolves, so it's not, you know, his match fitness is there, he's, you know, he's, he's absolutely fine. But it, it is also going to a new team, into a new system, although Steve Cooper does know him, and I think that that's actually a reflection on why he came on and Dennis didn't, for example. I think it's because he knows Morgan Gibbs White so well, so he knows what he'll, exactly what he'll get out of him. I think that's why he came on, but no, I didn't think he'd start. I, you know, I thought it was probably a little bit too soon for him, but I think there was someone's put a picture up, uh, just basically showing the, the, the team last week with the bench and the team this week with the bench, and it's just it's so refreshing to see that we've got this squad now. And I get a little bit frustrated seeing on Twitter people saying, "Oh, you know, we don't need to sign any more players. You know, we know we don't need this player. We're well stocked in that position." I've seen this link with a few right backs this week, and people say we've got Nico Williams. It's like, well, okay, yeah, but if Nico Williams gets injured, what do we do then? Because Bian Cohen is probably a backup, but he's also a centre half, so is he a natural backup? And is, you've got nine substitutes and five subs that you can use in the game. You have to have a big squad of players to choose from. I think having seasoned pros like Piarte on the bench, having Champions League experience in Remo Froehler. And having pace in, you know, obviously Emmanuel Dennis and then obviously Morgan Gibbs White as well, it was so refreshing to see that today. It really was. And I felt like we could change the game if we needed to off the bench. Yeah, and it's 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 evident that you look at that bench now when you've got the options to change a game, whereas before, for the first two games, you looked at the bench and thought, well, some of these lads wouldn't even get into our bench in the championship last season. Such was the jump into the Premier League. And as you say, the, the squad that needs to be built now with the introduction of five substitutes and nine on the bench. But Forrest, it looks like they've, they've made those steps and that depth is now in the squad. Coming into the game itself then, so... To begin with, Everton were probably the brighter side, carving out more opportunities, more on the attack. And it was Dean Henderson who was forced into some early saves. He made a double stop to deny Anthony Gordon and then followed up with a, a, another save to keep out Damari Gray. And there was also an early free kick from Gray which flashed across the face of goal and wide. Um it, it did take Forrest a little bit of time to get into this game, didn't it, and find their feet? Yeah, I think it was to be expected, though. Uh, you know, the, the first two games for Everton, they, you know, they had no points. Um, they would have been determined to come into this um, probably with a, mi- a mindset that might not seem fair to us as Forrest fans, um, but a mindset of kind of thinking, well, we're at home, we're playing a newly promoted side. 
you know, we haven't got any points on the board yet. We really, really need to get some points on the board. Let you know, we've got to go out and then we've got to try and win the game. And ultimately today that they, they needed to win the game. Um so it didn't surprise me the way they came out. I think it's I think we struggled to deal with it early on. Um but it's such is the quality of their players as well. Like, you know, Damari Gray got a lot of stick from the Forest fans today. Um I think it was it was earlier on in the game where he went down quite easily and he got quite a bit of stick after that, but also then he's an ex Leicester player, which you know definitely rad a few fans and stuff. So no, I wasn't surprised with the way that they came out, and I think that they really thought we were getting early goal and can really put you know can really, really put some pressure on the players like Newcastle did when they got the goal. Well, yeah, that was the difference, wasn't it? That Forest were more resolute today. They didn't give that first goal away and Everton couldn't find that breakthrough that they would have wanted to, um, you know, to, to get themselves in front and I suppose get the, get the result, which a lot of their fans were expecting. They were looking at Forest as a newly promoted team and a, a side who they could take three points off. But I think we saw again, the, the resoluteness of this forest side, they are hard to break down and they, they've got the goalkeeper who is really proving his worth. And again, more saves in the first half. There was a clearance by Steve Cook to deny Gray and block a shot away for a corner. Henderson again, making saves in that second half. It is really encouraging to see forest stepping up to this level, but actually being quite solid with it? Yeah, I, I, to be honest, when we defend, I do think we defend well overall. Um, Dean Henderson is a different level. I, I I can't understand. I mean, when we got him on low, you know, I've got a few friends that are United fans, and they couldn't understand why he'd been loaned out. I mean, you know, the assumption, because De Gea had a good season last year, um, but he still has his weaknesses, his flaws that, of course, have been you know, brought to light recently, especially against the Brentford. Um, you know, Dean Henderson had the chance in the Forest Land today, England's number one. Um, obviously, then Channel at Jordan Pitt, but England's number two, which is quite funny. Um, but he is, he is England's number one for me. I, I, I don't see a world in which he's not better than Jordan Pickford or Aaron Ramsdale. I think it's just Nick Pope that I'd be like, mm, maybe, but. He's outstanding. And I think that when you have a good goalkeeper, that it gives the back three, in our case, confidence. It gives them the, the, the belief to think, right, well, we do have an excellent goalkeeper behind us. My only complaint about the defence today, um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of people jumping on the bandwagon to always have to have someone to, you know, dig out, if you like. Um, I've seen a lot, a lot on social media tonight of Joe Worrell getting a lot of flack. Um, I just think it's taking him a bit of time to adjust to the Premier League. I don't think it's the case that he's not good enough. I don't think it's the case of that he's, you know, oh, he won't work in the Premier League. I just think it's for three games in. I mean, he's maybe a yard off the pace at the moment. Um, he's maybe adjusting to the league because it's so different to the Championship, the level. But I don't think he can't do it. I think I think that that is wide of the mark. I think he, he didn't have the best game today, um, granted. And I've seen a lot of comments to state that he's maybe the weak link in the back three, which I think is a bit unfair, but I, I do get, I understand where people are coming from a bit. Yeah. But, he's probably not got the obvious attributes that say Scott McKenna's got with his physicality or Nia Carte's got with his pace and his, re, his recovery speed. But I, that's not to say that Worrell is not a capable Premier League player he is somebody who's constantly developed through his time at Forest and I think yeah what you're saying there he's he's still developing isn't he in many ways there's a reason why Premier League clubs have been looking at him for a few years now yeah and he, he is still young as well and I think that that's one thing to you know he's not he's not Steve Cook he's not you know early 30s season perhaps he's, he's still only 24 25 he's still a young man like of course, he's going to take the time to adapt. And, you know, 
yeah, I think it was actually probably didn't, didn't help Morrill's case that Ryan Hicks came on and was absolutely outstanding today. <laughs> he came on and was like a duck to water in the Premier League. He was brilliant. Like he, he was he didn't look out of place in the slightest. But Moral will come good. You know, I, I don't think there's any time to panic yet. I think that defensively we look solid though, not just because of the back three, but also because um, you've got Mangala sat in front of them and O'Brien. I, I want to sort of pick out Mangala maybe a little bit more on the defensive side of things because he he is fantastic. I don't know, like, I, I've seen him play before, not an awful lot of him, but I've seen him play before. But he he's so much better than I thought he'd be. Uh, I, I, he's adapted so well to the Premier League. I thought he was absolutely brilliant today. It's such a shame he had to go off. Thank, you know, thankfully he's not injured. Um, Steve Steve Cooper obviously confirmed after the game, which is brilliant. But the way he wins the ball back, the way he gets his tackles, the way that he breaks the play up, it's exactly what we needed. Um, and I'm so glad we found that. And it does make the defence a lot more solid to have that player in front of them. Yeah, he's been fantastic so far, hasn't he? And I thought Lewis O'Brien again was putting in a very tidy performance today, building on the good showing that he had against West Ham. And there's the makings there of a, of a very decent partnership between the two of them. And that's before you even consider Freuler, who's going to come in at some point, we imagine, and is the guy who plays international football regularly and has got Champions League experience. It does look like we are quite well stocked in the midfield and it's showing on the pitch as well, isn't it? Kiate, another example, coming on today and seeing out the match. Suddenly there's plenty of options in there for Steve Cooper. Well, yeah, because the thing is with Broiler as well is that I'm still very surprised that he chose to come to Forest. I mean, you've got to consider that that Atalanta team are probably on the back end of you know their success. They've overachieved for season. You've got, you know, Ilicic and Zapata. Obviously, Papu Game has already left. They're kind of aging out a little bit now. So I think maybe he's looked at it and gone, OK, well, look, I'm going to be on more money at Forest, which he inevitably will be. We, we cut, you know, Serie A wages, we can't compete with Premier League wages. But I think it's also, it's, there's an opportunity here to play in the Premier League and that is something that a lot of players do want to do. So maybe that's what it is. But I'm, I'm so shocked that no, no other club in the Premier League went in for him. Um, you know, but I don't see because he will get his chance, and that's the thing. Like, there will be a lot of squad rotation. We have a big squad. We will need to, you know. But the key thing is when you we're rotating the squad. Obviously, it's why Man City are so good at it. Um, is that when you bring somebody in, there's not a massive drop off in quality, or occasionally there's not a drop off in quality at all. You can bring a player in and not lose that. And for me. Broil is going to be fantastic when he comes in. Kiyote is very versatile as well. He can play centre mid. He can play, you know, holding midfield to break the play. Or he can play centre half. Um, I think that maybe we, with Nick Arte out injured, we could see Kiyote fill in at centre back. Um, he's also quite quick. I know he's a little bit older now, so he's maybe lost that touch of pace that he had when he was at Anderlecht in West Ham. But he is still that player. So maybe that could be an interesting option, but it's nice to have this discussion and say we have so many players that can fit into this position and the players that are there are already playing really well. Not even to mention Ryan Yates. Yeah, plenty of options available to Forrest and these players are already starting to show their worth. So Forrest went in nil-nil at half-time and I think we could all be pretty happy with that first half showing on balance. Second half, again, Everton did come out a bit and created some opportunities. Again, Henderson was called into action a few times, made some really smart saves. But one of the, one of the um, kind of elements of that first half, and you touched on it earlier with the Everton fans, the longer that the game went on without them scoring and without them playing particularly flowing stuff attack wise the more that the fans seemed to get on their back and that started to work in Forest's favour didn't it it seemed as if Forest were beginning to grow into the game sort of around 10 minutes or so into that second half yeah I think that 
there, there, there was certainly a lot of um, sort of the way to put it. I, mean, I think it's more there was no booze. Um, I, there wasn't there wasn't any booing or anything like that from the Everton fans, but it was the, it was the groans and it was the oh, like you know a, a misplaced pass. It was a big groan from the whole crowd. Oh, like you know the frustration it when you know I think players like for example and yeah Anthony but like Gordon. I think Gordon's a really good player. Um, I think that he's definitely got a lot of ability and seeing him in person maybe sort of go you know what he does have a lot of ability but that end product sometimes he'd, he'd, he'd misplays a pass or he'd shoot when there was a better option it was just the groan from the crowd it was it was that frustration of kind of a team that's and this is where it's weird because we're in August we've got to remember but it, there's almost a groan of a team that's halfway through the season and nothing's going right for them you're at home you're only it's only your third game of the season. There's no panic button needs to be hit yet. So it, it really surprised me. I mean, I know this has probably come off the end of last season as well. Lampard came in and did a a solid job, a steady job. Um but I know that Everton fans weren't exactly thrilled with what's happened and the fact that they've lost with Charleston. Um so, you know, Calvert Lewin can't stay fit, so they just, I mean, the starting Premier League games with Solomon and Rondon, it's not good enough to start Premier League football matches. Um, you know, they're crying out for a centre forward, they're crying out for somebody that they can, you know, get them on their feet as well. Like Dwight McNeil will come into that role at some point. But I get the frustration, I do understand it. I, I get a lot of the grievances that Everton fans have, but getting on your team's back on the third game of the season is just nonsense to me. I don't understand it at all. The 1865 Match Report. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. And Geico is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to Geico.com or contact your local agent today. Forrest seemed to be encouraged by that that kind of discontent among the Everton fans. It gave them the opportunity to to get get more into the game, take the game a bit more to their hosts, having defended fairly resolutely for the first hour or so. The Forrest got into better positions, players Toffolo and Williams, the wing backs were getting forward more, and there were more chances for Forrest. Ryan Yates had an effort which was deflected wide for a corner, and then on 81 minutes, the Reds eventually took the lead, and I think deservedly so as well. Brennan Johnson, with his first goal of the season, having been denied last week by a correct offside call against West Ham. Talk us through this one, because uh, I think you had quite a good view of it, didn't you, from your vantage point in the away end? Yeah, I was I was quite near the front. Um, so it was, you know, was screaming for Yates to shoot. He's on the edge of the box. And to be fair, he can. Like, he scored a few goals last season, so he, he can. Um you can almost describe Yates as a goal scoring midfielder now, which is quite strange to think, but he kind of is. He scored quite a few goals last season. So, yeah, now he hits the shot, he, it parries back out. Um, the only concern from sort of our angle was kind of, well, once when Yates hit the shot, was Brennan in the offside position when he hit the shot. Um, obviously, he wasn't, which is great for us, but now it comes back out to Brennan and there's no chance, there's no way in my mind that he doesn't score. Um, it's the big positive from the day. Um, not just the fact that we we scored a goal and got a point out of the game, it's more the fact of who scored. Um, we didn't want it to go a long time for Brennan waiting for that goal because, you know, last season he was our best player, he was our key player. This season, of course, there's, there's, there's Gibbs White, there's, there's, other, there's Dennis, there's other players, how many have been brought in, but I still want Brennan Johnson to be, and I still think he can be our best player or one of our best players, so that would mean the world to him to get that goal. Um, and I tell you this now, mate, honestly, some of the some of the biggest limbs I've ever seen in the way. 
I I was on I was from my seat, and I I, I don't even know I couldn't even tell you how it happened, but I was on the front row by the time of two minutes after like thirty seconds after that ball was hit the back of the net. I'm on the front row. Eight, I'm, I'm in the eighth row when I started. <laughs> I'm, I'm, ushered down the stairs with my dad and we're on the front row and stuff. I'm going to watch Match of the Day tonight and I'd be surprised if I'm not on Match of the Day tonight after that. <laughs> there you go. And uh, your uh, your TV appearance, front row Goodison, that's not bad, is it? That's uh, one way to, to celebrate a goal. <laughs> it did. The Forest fans were, were superb throughout and... Yeah, the shots of them celebrating with with Brennan and Jesse Lingard and Gibbs White all getting involved as well. Brilliant to see. And these are the kind of moments that you get promoted for. You know, these big away grounds in the Premier League scoring these kind of goals. It it really was special. Um, unfortunately for Forrest, it wasn't to be the winning goal. Um, Everton did find an equaliser seven minutes later through Damari Gray. Now this... Talking through this goal, it's it's a bit of a frustrating one. It's a well taken goal from Damari Gray's point of view. Um, Jordan Pickford launches a pass upfield, and we all know how good his distribution is. The Forest defence has pushed up high. It's left with it looks like Warrell has been shifted across, or and then there's a fullback out of position as well, which means that. There's space for Damari Gray. He collects the ball, carries it forward with his pace and slots it past Dean Henderson for the equaliser. It, looking at it, it's, it is a frustrating goal to concede, Adam. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was... Complete, but the thing is, the reaction from the away end was more... Oh, it's got to be offside. Because it, it has to be offside. There's, there's no way that... Demar, I mean, because they game wrong, he took it down brilliantly. It was a calm and composed finish past a goalkeeper that was in red hot form today and last week. So, you know, it was a confident finish. And, you know, Damari Gray, after all the stick that he got from Forest fans, took it very well. I'm sure he enjoyed that one after the stick he got. But I just couldn't, I couldn't understand how there was so much room. I, I couldn't understand how he was, you know, completely free in the middle of the park and going for on goal. So we were all thinking the ball's gone in and thinking, all right, okay, don't worry, because. VAR to the rescue um, is clearly offside and you know I haven't actually watched it back yet I was I'm, I'm the sort of person that, that now we're on like match of the day and stuff I don't actually want to watch anything Forest related until match of the day I sort of look forward to it but you know, I've heard from quite a few people that he absolutely wasn't offside he just got a lot of space for the middle um, disappointing really disappointing to concede that don't know you know I've seen a lot of people online saying, oh, you can't say play, that doesn't happen. You can't say that. You don't know, do you? Ultimately, yeah. it's it's one of those. It's it's disappointing, but you learn from it. Um, you will you will concede sloppy goals at any level. Um, we've just got to make sure that you don't kick yourself too much about it or point the finger too much at one person. Really, you know, Joe Warren took a lot of flack for the goal. I don't, I don't know if it was his fault. I, you know, I can't see from our side. I'm sure I'll be able to see a bit more on match today, but from people I spoke to that watched it, it wasn't his fault. So, and it's Premier League football, isn't it? These moments can happen in a in a few seconds. You you can concede a goal, and it, it makes such a difference in games. That's how quickly matches can swing at this level, and that's something that Forest will need to get used to and and adapt to as they continue to play these matches and gain more Premier League experience. Looking back on the the balance of play, though, I think a point for both sides was a fair reflection of the match. Would you go along with that? Yeah, point's fair. You know, coming out of the ground, um, neither neither, neither set of fans were happy. And, you know, in a way, that, that is the biggest compliment to football that both sets of fans wanted and felt they could win the game. You know, that's what you want. That's what you want the Premier League to be. That's what you want competitive football to be. But no, on, on the day, look, Everton had a lot of chances. Um, the one that sticks out to me after this score was Anthony Gordon's where I was convinced he scored. He, you know, he's, he's had the opportunity to go around Henderson. Henderson stood tall and he hasn't. You know, on another day, he knocks it around him and he takes it. You know, and they get a, a winner, which they wouldn't have deserved. I think it's, you know, 
they did get the tails up after they scored and after they scored I felt like we were hanging on a little bit so if you want to go flip that on its head Yates he could have scored they made it 2-1 you know he had the I'd probably call it a half chance I don't think it was a clear call I mean it was probably a half chance but but that was the game that was the game in a nutshell you know they they had a chance we had a few chances we come close or you know so the points fair either way don't think either set of fans were dead pleased with it we were probably the happier to go away to Goodison and get a point um, but yeah it, it's a fair result I think that Everton three games in one point I think theirs is probably a bigger picture the reason that they're not happy with it Morgan Gibbs-White who signed in the week from Wolves made his Forest debut off the bench today replacing Taiwo Awani on the hour mark what were your first impressions of him in a forest shirt. Yeah, it's funny because actually his first touch, he miscontrolled it and then <laughs> Everton went on the counter-attack and I was, you know, I wasn't worried, obviously. I know how good a player is, but, you know, there's a few groans from people around. I was like, oh, no. Um, but no, like, he was brilliant. He, he, grew, he really grew into the game. Um, I'm, hope, I'm hoping they show it later on much today, but he had that, this little, t- it rose right in front of us as well, this little turn where he flicks in, he, he beats a player of this, you know, little turn and give and go with um, I think it was Abba Johnson or I can't remember but and he just went oh, he, just, he, do, he, he does have that class he has that touch of class on the ball sort of Sheffield United last season um, he obviously punished us with it a couple of times last season actually he loves scoring at the city ground doesn't he um, hopefully that continues but yeah no look he, he looked really good when he came on and I'm just really excited to see what he's, he's going to be doing going forward I, I'd expect that he probably starts next week yeah, me too. And I look forward to seeing what he can offer Forrest now that he's finally joined the club and he's working again with Steve Cooper. You're listening to 1865, the Nottingham Forest podcast. Now it's time to hear the Everton perspective on the match. And now we are joined by Mike from the Unholy Trinity Everton podcast. Just got back from Goodison Park to, to see you. Pretty uneventful game, really. Uh, Everton won, Nottingham Forest won. Uh, a game that, from an Everton point of view, um, you know, we started pretty well, bossed the game in the first 15 20, took our foot off the gas, um, let, let Forest back into the game, um, and and then sort of saw things through till, till half time again, pretty much on the on the front foot, and that, that continued into the second half for the, for the early parts. Uh, but we we lost our way um, and and left Forest into the game. In my opinion, I was I was quite surprised how many times during the game we had so much control. You know, both both sides obviously keen to to pick up points. Uh, I think Forest came to and were quite happy to to get the draw. Uh, a bit bit of time wasting going on from from early on, especially from from Dean Henderson. Um, but I, th- I think I think ourselves we know where we where we lack. We we know uh, a striker is is desperately needed. Salomon Rondon did did fairly well in the time that he was on. Clearly, the manager thought he couldn't do the full ninety, so he, he gave about an hour um, overall. But we, we we seemed to at that particular point once we we took our our focal point off up top, we we seemed to lose our way, and it was a a little bit too easy. For, for Forrest and you know the, some good some good young kids there you know you know no one more than than uh, Brendan Johnson who, who got his his first Premier League goal uh, Morgan Gibbs White came on looked looked pretty pretty solid as well um, but it was a game really that you know you you look back on it and you'd probably say a draw was about right um, as an Everton fan disappointed we didn't win the game based on the the number of of better chances that we had, you know, we we look back at Anthony Gordon later on when it was one all, could have won it. Uh, he had uh, another couple of chances in the game as well, uh, drawing a couple of saves from from Dean Henderson. Um, Solomon Rondon could have done better with the one he swivelled on the edge of the box and, and put the shot just wide. So there was chances there for us to win it. Forrest had a couple of chances, um, but nothing nothing particularly major in my opinion. And so. Always disappointing when we, I feel, we've been the better side over the course of the ninety minutes and not come away with the, with the three points. Um, but I feel, 
I feel both sides didn't want to lose that game today. Uh, a better point for Forest than it is it is for ourselves. We've got to dust ourselves down and and go again and hopefully make make some more some more moves in the transfer market over over the next week or so. So all in all, about right I'd say one all, but still from an Everton point of view, disappointing not to get the three points. Thanks, Mike. And now it's time for the Forest news. Hi, it's Callum Castell with the 1865 News Roundup this week. Um, one place to start, the Gibbs White deal. It did come through in the end. It's been a long time waiting. Um, the fee was something that needed to be sorted out for a long time and it came to fruition. So to break it down, it was reported that it's a 25 mil fee that Wolves will receive straight away from Forest. That could rise to 7 to £10 million dependent on the add-ons. It sounds like they're quite realistic. Um, and then some in unrealistic add-ons that take up to 42.5 mil, which John Percy reported uh, would have to mean Forest making Europe uh, and other bits like that. So may not take up to 42.5 mil, but nevertheless, that's Forest's record signing, all sealed and delivered. Um, that kind of means that the Neil Morpay deal uh, rose and crashed in the same week. It looks like Fulham were going to take him for £15 million. It was something that Forest were close to, um, but they moved on to Gibbs White. Uh, that kind of leaves a bit of doubt on the Hussam Awar situation. Uh, he hasn't been in the Leon squad. It has been reported that he's looking to move uh, pretty soon. Uh, there's a few bits with that, different reports. It's something to keep an eye on, um, but yeah, I wouldn't put my hat on it. Um, Some good and bad news in terms of injuries. Uh, Steve Cooper did confirm that Niakate is going to be out for a few months, which is a big dent to the team. Um, Straight after the game, John Percy reported that Willy Bolly would be the first player that Forrest inquired for for around a million, which was rejected. Um, But Yates has returned to the squad and played against Everton and Oro Mangala that's been put down to a bit of fatigue so hopefully everything should be okay in that regard um, another little bit of transfer news Joe Lolly moved to Sydney so we wish him all the best there and uh, James Garner has been made available by Manchester United so that was obviously something that Forrest were keeping an eye on for a while um, but it seems like Man United had to keep an eye on him for too long of a time for Forrest it might still happen but it's less likely with all the midfielders that have been bought uh, I'll be back with the news after the Tottenham game. Thanks, Callum. And to wrap up this match report episode, we'll look forward to the visit of Tottenham Hotspur to the city ground next Sunday. A big marquee fixture, one of the top six, arguably top four coming to the city ground. One of the fixtures I'm sure many Forest fans were looking forward to when those fixtures were first announced back in June. And Adam, how are you feeling about this one? Are you more confident after the performance, not only today, but also West Ham in front of a home city ground crowd last week? Yeah, I mean... Look, I'm excited for the next two games. Um, I'm not nervous for either because I don't think anyone, no one expects to get anything out of either of them, right? So there's no reason to be nervous. And I'm sure Steve Cooper's message would probably be quite similar to the players. Like, look, people don't, you know, you're not expected to go out and get anything. But, you know, at home, you know, West Ham are a team that are trying to qualify for Europe then this season. You know, they're trying to push the top six, I'd imagine from what you know what it seems like from their fan base although they haven't started particularly well but um and they came here last week and I think we really did well against them. Um we won't fear anyone at home. You know, I think we'll have a terrific home record this year. We've had a terrific home record under Steve Cooper. Um so I, I don't expect this game to be easy for Tottenham in the slightest. I, I think that they they will they will find out quite quickly that if they're coming in complacent you know, if they've, if they've watched Arsenal stay at Bournemouth and thought, well, that's what we'll do at Forest, it won't be the case at all. Um, but look, Harry Kane's one of my favourite players from a personal perspective to go to the England captain play against your club is, is pretty special. Um, 
So, you know, I'm excited for things like that, but there were no friends. <laughs> there were no, like, I liked Harry Kane every day because they were like, you know, he's a terrific striker and it worries me. But now, look, it's, we're all excited for it. This is why you get promoted, isn't it? For the big occasions, the big games, um, the big players all coming to the state ground. It's not a free hit because there's no free hits in league games. You can't have a free hit in a league match. You need to try and get as much points on the board. But we can play with a bit more freedom, I think. And I think it'd be a terrific game of football. It promises to be, doesn't it? And and plenty to look forward to. A confident Forest team taking on the quality that Spurs possess that you've mentioned there. The likes of Kane, Son, Kulisewski, you know, big game players. Uh, and of course, following that up with a, a trip to champions Manchester City a few days later so whilst Forest season isn't going to be defined by results against the likes of Spurs or Man City I mean, it's still a great opportunity to to test yourselves and yeah you never know you might you might get a positive result against these teams I do fancy Forest at some point this season to upset one of those so-called big six teams and they've got nothing to fear have they oh no and I think that's what it comes down to I, I, they shouldn't be fair um, playing these clubs um, like you say I, I don't see that, that our season will be defined by these games but they always say what is it about 40 points that you want to have on the board to yeah. sort of go that's probably where we're safe or we're, we're, cl- we're close to being safe the quicker you get there, the quicker you can relax and play your game and play your football. And, you know, and I think that you've got these games against Man City and, you know, Tottenham and then you know, in a couple of months' time, we've got Arsenal away at the end of October and, you know, Liverpool at home in October as well. You, you know, you've got to play these teams. There's no point going on. You need the top six home and away. You know, those, those 12 games of football, we're not going to get, we're not, gonna, we're not bothered if we get anything out of them. You, you can't look at it like that. So in the six home games against these clubs, you've got to think, well, you've got to come here and get something off us. Because Man City, when we play them, we play them in February, they're going to be right in the midst of a title charge at that point. They've got to come to the city ground and get something. Spurs were disappointing today. We watched the Spurs game, you know, they've been pretty poor today against a Wolves team that certainly aren't firing on all cylinders either. So they're they're, they're under pressure. I I I I don't think Spurs are in a title challenge, but that was the opinion before the season that they'd be the closest third they've got to prove that they've got to come to the city ground which Dean Henderson described as a fortress and it's exactly what we want it to be they've got to come here and win and I sound like Kevin Keegan when I'm saying like they've got to come here and get something <laughs> but I would love it if we beat them and I do think we can beat them and we've got nothing to fear and nothing to lose if they come here and beat us 2-0 no one's going to be like ah oh, Forrest we're awful so they just people you know Spurs would play well when Spurs did their job so look I'm excited looking forward to it I think every Forest fan's lucky enough to be going next week and myself should drink it all in when it happens absolutely we'll leave it there thanks Adam and thanks also to you listener for joining us for this match report we'll be back with you after the Spurs game next week don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on your podcast platform to make sure that you don't miss any of our match reports and also to make sure that fellow Forest fans find our content and listen. Thanks again and until next time, goodbye. Sports Social Podcast Network.